Hello everybody, my name is Inigo Iri and today we are going to talk about medial uh, ligamentary complex injuries of the ankle. We saw the anatomy, we saw the uh, ultrasound evaluation and now we are going to talk about injuries. And let's go... Okay, and let's go. First of all, a brief introduction. Uh, usually the mechanism of injury is a supination with external rotation that you can see here in the image and in this mechanism usually the superficial layer is affected and with pronation the deep layer will be affected. There are very rare as, as isolated injuries and they, they come with other injuries usually with the lateral ligament injuries as most frequent, syndesmosis injuries or external malleolus fractures usually type B of um, external malleolus fractures are associated in 50% with some kind of deltoid complex injury. If we have a, an injury of the external complex and the medial complex, then a major instability of the, of the ankle may be present and usually check for talus displacement in the x-rays or in the other uh, complementary exams. Remember that we have two layers, the deep layer with the posterior tibiotalar ligament and the anterior tibiotalar ligament. And we are going to begin with this uh, deep layer. Usually affected in pronation. Pronation of the, of the ankle stresses the talus and these two components may be affected. Usually the location of the injury is inside the, the, in the middle of the ligament or in its talus insertion. It's very very uncommon in the tibial insertion of the, in the deep layer. The ultrasound can allow us uh, to locate properly this injury but sometimes uh, to distinguish between total or partial rupture may be challenging. Always when we have a ligamentary uh, injury we will have thickening and hypoechogenicity of the ligament. If we take a look at the normal ligament, we can see this pattern, this fibrillar pattern is created in the posterior tibiotalar ligament and its echogenicity is very similar to the surrounding structures. Always perform a dorsiflexion of the ankle to obtain this image. In this case, you can notice a thickening and hypoechogenicity of the ligament here. This is the tibiotalar, the posterior tibiotalar ligament and if we compare with the normal side, you can notice the thickening and the hypoechoic ligament we will find here. When you're beginning with the ultrasound, always compare with the normal, with the contralateral side if you have doubts. This is another example. This is another thickening and loss of this fibrillar pattern of the posterior tibiotalar ligament. Okay. As you can see, sometimes it's difficult to see. We can use ultrasound the uh, Doppler to assess its vascularization. And uh, this Doppler may help, um, um, can help us in mild affections or mild injuries. All times we will find these tears inside the ligament. This is an example of a partial tear of the deep area of the posterior tibiotalar ligament and its vascularization in Doppler. If you want to check the vascularization, always uh, remember to um, avoid to uh, stretch the ligament and perform Doppler, because if the ligament is stretched, the Doppler will be not present. Okay? And don't forget to uh, don't um, push with the probe, because you will collapse the, the vessels. Okay. Complete tears are very rare. If we have a suspect of a completed tear, always ask for MRI because of associated injuries uh, are very, very commonly present. So we need a complete evaluation of the ankle and an MRI is a better complementary exam to assess the whole ankle. Avulsions may be present. Uh, usually are most frequent in the superficial component, but 
uh, you can also have present some avulsions in the deep component. This is an avulsion of the insertion of the posterior tibiotalar ligament in the talus. And this is an avulsion of the anterior tibiotalar component on the talus here. This is the calcaneo spring ligament, no, sorry, the tibio spring ligament. So, so below this tibio spring, we will find the anterior tibio tailor ligament here. You can notice this injury of the ligament and the evolution of the insertion of the talus. Always perform dynamic maneuvers in the posterior tibio tailor. It's mandatory to have a good view of this ligament. You can also perform plantar flexion to assess the anterior components, the tibio navicular and the tibio spring ligaments, and uh, some um, valgus maneuvers can help us to distinguish the tibio calcaneal component uh, injuries. Okay, in the superficial layer, first of all, we are going to begin with the tibio calcaneal ligament between the tibia and the sustaculum tali here. Usually this superficial layer will be affected in mechanism of supination and external rotation. And the location is usually proximal. 90% of the affection of the superficial layer will take place uh, on its tibial insertion. So always check this area. The tibiocalcaneus a ligament is the first all we are going to check and you can see here between the tibia and the sustaculum tali here this thickening this hypocogenicity of the ligament if we compare with the contralateral side remember that this is very very uncommon to find an isolated component affected and the rest of the ligament normal usually there are several components affected you can find calcium deposits in, inside the ligament as a metaplasia of the inert ligament. This is another example of the hypochoic thickening ligament and the normal side. Okay, in this case, with these calcium deposits inside the ligament on the vascularization in the Doppler. Tibial cortical avulsions are very, very common. Always check the insertion. You can see here between the tibia and the calcaneus, this thickening of the ligament and this uh, uh, avulsion here. Maybe here we have a tear inside the posterior tibial ligament. And now we are checking the superficial component. Okay, you can see here an affection of the posterior tibial ligament and this affection of the superficial component with this avulsion on its insertion. This is another example. This is the and this is not the tibio calcarea, but the tibio navicular ligament. But I um, I put the image here to remind that sometimes this avulsion will be very big, and we are talking about a small fracture. Okay, this is a bone fragment of one centimeter in the medial malleolus. Okay, so be careful because sometimes we will talk about a fracture. <clears throat> okay, we have seen the tibio calcaneal component, now the tibio spring component between the tibia and the spring ligament. This is the tibia, this is the spring ligament on its short axis, and you can notice his, here the thickening and hypoechogenicity of this component. As you can see, we can very accurately name the components affected of the deltoid ligament. Now, sorry, the tibio navicular, just anterior to the tibio spring, the tibio navicular ligament. An example is the tibia, this is the head of the talus, and this is the shadow of the navicular bone. This is the end of the spring ligament. And you can see here this hypochoic thickening of the ligament of the tibio navicular ligament with the, in this case bony evolution a, a big evolution here more than a centimeter and the edema 
in this tibio navicular component and with Doppler inside. Okay, so as you have seen, uh, you have seen, sorry, you can uh, you can find injuries of the deep layer of the superficial layer of the tibiocalcaneal component, tibio spring component, tibio navicular component of the posterior tibiotalar component and the anterior tibiotalar component. All the six components may be affected, and we can assess very very properly, very accurately with the ultrasound. Now we are going to check other possibilities, other associated injuries. And when we have detected an injury of the deltoid ligament, always we need to check external ligament complex, anterior tibiofibular ligament, medial retinaculum and posterior tibialis tendon, and the spring ligament. All these structures must be assessed. Example of a medial collateral ligament injury with an affection of the anterior tibiofibular ligament. Uh, sorry, an anterior talofibular ligament. This is the fibula. You can see here this aversion of the bone and the absence of the fascicle of the anterior talofibular ligament here. There's no ligament here. So this is a grade three affection of this anterior talofibular ligament. In the, same, in the uh, same patient, we are going to check the calcaneofibular ligament. You can see here the peroneal tendons, and below the peroneal tendon, this is the calcaneofibular ligament. The calcaneofibular ligament, in this case, is thickened, is hypochoic, with this small, this is very, very thick here, and thin here. So, but this always a small continuity of the tendon. There's no a total loss of continuity. So this is a grade two affection of the um, uh, calcaneofibular ligament, and with dynamic maneuvers, dorsiflexion of the foot, of the ankle. Sorry, we notice some kind of uh, uh, re re rejection of the peroneal tendon. So this is not a complete tear of the ligament. The anterior tibiofibular ligament, in this case, another patient with disaffection of the anterior tibiofibular ligament, this is the normal side, thickened, hypochoic with this partial rupture on depth. This uh, ultrasound uh, scan is performed in the subacute phase. In its acute phase, um, you can see this image here. So I think the ligament was totally uh, affected. But now he's uh, partially repaired. Okay, so this is an affection of the syndesmosis. The medial retinaculum, always check the medial retinaculum. The retinaculum insertion is in the periosteum of the tibia here. This is the posterior tibialis tendon. And above, you can see this thickening hypochoic retinaculum. Okay, so this is a torn retinaculum. And is uh, more than two millimeters of thickness so you can measure the thickness if you want or compare with the contralateral side this is the normal contralateral side and you can see a very thin retinaculum it's important when it's affected because you must always check for posterior tibialis instability so uh, if you uh, find that the uh, posterior tibialis is not on its normal location or with the dynamic maneuvers it uh, gets luxated, so we will find an instability of the posterior tibialis tendon. This is an example, this is not an instability, sorry I don't have these images. This is an affection of the retinaculum with a normal posterior tibialis. Okay, an affection of the deltoid ligament as you can see here a huge affection uh, and I think the, the deep component of the posterior tibiotelial ligament is has a complete rupture here but this image is to show you the retinaculum not the not the the delta ligament sorry so this is the affection of the retinaculum and to finish the spring ligament here this is an, an image this is the 
Sustaculontali, this is the head of the talus and this is an avicular bone and you can notice between these three bones there should be the spring ligament located here but the, delt the posterior tibialis uh, tendon is inside the spring ligament the superior medial uh, fascicle of the spring ligament component of the spring ligament if you uh, if you have seen the video of the evaluation of this ligament we always check uh, this tendon we follow the posterior tibialis till we reach it uh, is um, travel between these two and these three bones okay the sustaculontali head of the talus and the navicular so this is the video we start locating the tib posterior tibialis we place the probe in the same axis as the sole of the foot we locate the posterior tibialis and we follow it distally okay and now this is its insertion on the navicular bone and this is this is traveling between the three bones the sustaculontali the head of the talus here and the navicular bone and you can notice that the posterior tibialis lies directly over the head of the talus because there's no spring ligament, there's no supramedial spring ligament here. So this is a total rupture of the supramedial, supramedial component of the spring ligament. And that's all, okay, we saw the lateral complex, now we have just seen the medial complex, its anatomy, its ultrasound assessment and its injury assessment with ultrasound and uh, just a take home message don't forget to take a look at the medial ligaments when you have a patient with an ankle sprain which complains about medial pain uh, and um, even if it has a diagnosis of lateral ankle sprain always take a look at the medial ligamentary complex and you will find more more injuries than you previously can think about and remember if you like the videos, check the like. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to be informed about new videos.